if you get a horoscope where the eighth house is enormously strong, oh. if a person has a, a chart that's extremely strong eighth house, they'll live long, they'll be sexually attractive, and they will get money without earning it. So if the eighth house is really strong, they can marry a partner who wins the lottery. Oh, okay. Because I it once is said, their I once, destiny. There, it's more the de it's more the spouse of, it's more the destiny of the spouse than the person that wins the lottery, oh, in my experience. Okay. So so when I look at horoscopes of people that win a million dollars or more, those charts they look good, they look okay. But when I look at their spouse, the wow. eighth house is everything. Like oh. Um Beautiful analysts. <laughs> Amazing it is. Well, it's just these are just different things that I've I've picked up over the years. In in India, I don't know about now, but you know, when I was there in nineteen eighty and earlier, um if Mars or Saturn aspected the fifth house, it could be a child that doesn't live. Okay. But if it's in America, it's more likely an abortion. Just generally, generally, not always, but uh, let's see. What else can I tell you? Um, if there's a connection between the tenth house and the twelfth house, the ruler of the tenth is in the twelfth, or vice versa, then the person is going to have career ups and downs, career changes, confusion of career. But if they do a spiritual career, a 12th house career, 12th house is moksha, enlightenment. So oh. if they do a spiritual career, the problems are not there so much. Oh. Something like but, astrology, you mean? Yes. My, my 10th house ruler is Saturn, <laughs> and it is aspected by the eighth house ruler. Eighth house is a bad house, right? So I've had numerous careers, but I've had an astrological career because the, uh, Jupiter rules the eighth house. So, for example, this is the ascendant here. This is uh, Taurus oh, okay. right here. So Jupiter and Saturn are aspecting each other to the degree. Oh, Saturn, okay. rules, Saturn rules the 10th house at 14 degrees of Virgo. Jupiter okay. is in the 11th at 14 degrees Pisces. Oh. So my 10th so my house ruler, first of all, it's aspected by Jupiter, okay. tightly. So that's a spiritual career, consciousness rating. But because it rules the 8th house, the careers are changing. I want it to be an actor. I wanted to do this, I wanted to do that, and it keeps changing. But the thing that would fit the best would be astrology because it's eighth house. Okay, so if you're saying if the tenth house has connection with either the eighth or the twelfth, then if they uh, do spirit, uh, this the, the twelfth house, the twelfth house would be more like yoga, meditation, oh, and could be astrology, spiritual. Okay. The eighth house, the eighth house is more likely to be something like astrology or research. Oh, okay. but, but it, it could be spiritual, but the eighth is more metaphysical. The twelfth oh. is more moksha, enlightenment. Okay. And if yeah. the tenth lord has connection with Jupiter, then also astrology can come in your sense. Spiritual career, any kind of spiritual career, okay. consciousness raising. Okay. If you get a chart that looks like medicine, medical, but the second house is very strong teaching, speaking, then that medical career is is usually a counselor. Oh. Someone healing people through speaking. Oh. Okay? If you're looking for big wealth, it's not just a big second house. The second house is money that you earn on a daily basis. The 11th house is large sums of money that come through side ventures 
oh. and that come that come through side ventures or any other means in large sums. So the people okay. that make millions and millions, crores and crores of rupees, are the people that have a connection between the second house and the eleventh house. Oh. So they have so they have the ruler of the second in the eleventh, oh. or the ruler of the eleventh in the second, or the two, the ruler of the eleventh and the ruler of the second, conjunct or aspecting each other. Okay. That's what gives the big money. And in this, That's, do you take uh, Rahu Ketu's co-rulership also? What would it rule? No, I'm saying suppose uh, if Ra Rahu is ruling the second house, suppose I mean for Capricorn ascendant. Yeah, yeah, you got you got freezed for some time. Uh oh, the screen is getting. Yeah, so what I'm saying is they take the co lord of Rahu uh, of Aquarius. Oh yes, Rahu. yes, 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 yes. I thought you meant connected to money. Yeah. So if you are doing Rahu, first you look at Rahu in the house. If it's in the tenth house, it's good for career. In the second house or eighth house, bad for family life. It okay. depends where it is. But then you also look, if Rahu's in Scorpio, look at what Mars is doing. Oh, no, I said this 211 connection, which you said. Oh. So I said if Rahu is the second lord or Ketu is the second or 11th lord, and then if... Rahu and Ketu don't rule any, any planet. Yeah, that, that's what and I was asking. It doesn't rule any house. Yes. So yes. not Rahu and Ketu, no. Okay. okay. Um... I also always talk about stationary planets. I find stationary planets to be extremely strong. Okay. A planet stationary, that is one of the strongest, strongest things of all. But you know, the thing is that each astrologer has to find their own way. You you start out with you start out reading horoscopes and you get feedback and as time goes by you will find what works for you as long as you are as long as you have a very strong desire to be accurate okay. as long as you check to see does this work is this accurate I was doing a reading today and you know the woman said to me uh, I said, you know, you make money through real estate, large sums of money. And then, you know, she said, Sh should I tell you when you're accurate? And I said, just let me speak. You know, this is the way I everybody does readings differently. I prefer to do the reading without knowing anything, telling them everything that I see. Um, at this point, now early on, you can't do that. You have to get feedback to find out what is accurate. By this point, I can see you know, what is accurate and what is not, because I've done it so long. I've done it for, it's never going to be 100%. It's a good reading is probably 70, 75%, I would say. It's never going to be fully, but I don't really need them to tell me now so much what, after the reading, they can say, well, this part wasn't true, this part was. But I prefer, because once I start reading the horoscope, if I'm not interrupted, as you're looking at the chart, more and more and more information comes out, unless unless their horoscope is very has a very bad ninth house, oh. and then and then it's very difficult to read the chart. It's oh. just hard. Oh. But there are there are some horoscopes that are insanely difficult to read. Sometimes you get three or four planets in one sign and two or three planets exactly opposite those. Those are opposite those planets. Those mm. charts are terribly difficult to read. So. What you have to do is you have to, you have to isolate everything. Okay. So maybe you've got three or four planets in, in, in Capricorn and three planets in Cancer. They're aspecting each other and, they're conjunct, they're aspecting. So you have to go house by house. 
Okay. So you go to the ruler of the Aries house and you look for Mars. Mars may be conjunct with two other planets and opposite two other planets. But you find the planet that aspects Mars the closest. Mm. Is it a benefic or a malefic? So you have to isolate everything because, because there's too many planets, you know, aspecting each other. It becomes uh, very, becomes very difficult. Uh, one thing that is very, very interesting is when you see a badly placed moon, say a moon in Scorpio, but the moon is full. Okay. That's very difficult to tell because the moon in Scorpio has fallen. It's a bad placement. But the moon can be so bright that it gives it power. Okay. Also, also, even if the moon is in a bad house <laughs> or afflicted, even you could have an afflicted moon. If the afflicted moon is in the third house, the person is still going to be in, interested in the arts. Because the moon is there. If the moon is in the fifth house, they will be interested in children, even though it's afflicted, okay. oftentimes. It can't be devastated, but if it's afflicted, it's still the moon. Wherever the moon is placed, this is a lunar-based system, so wherever the moon is placed, that's where a person's going to be playing out their karma. Where the ascendant ruler is, and where the moon is, that's where they're playing out their karma. When I do a horoscope, I give an overview. I say, I'm going to give a little overview, and then I'm going to go into the specifics. So I talk for about three or four minutes. Oh, this is a very spiritual chart. This is a very, it's a very strong chart for career. There's difficulties in marriage, but there's a very good intellect and good... I just give an overview quickly, very quickly. And then I go, you know, kind of very detailed. After I do the overview, I start by saying the most important influences in a Hindu Vedic chart are the moon and the ascendant. Okay. And, then I, and then I analyze the ascendant, planets aspecting the ascendant, planets in the ascendant, what the ascendant ruler is doing. That will tell me, is the person confident? Do they have confidence and the ability to be recognized? Okay. Then we look for the moon to see if they're emotionally comfortable. Oh. Okay. Now, if the first house is very weak, they don't have charisma, they don't gain recognition, I immediately look to the 10th house because they can get recognition for the career efforts. Oh. So some people get fame because the career is very strong, the 10th house. Some people get fame because the first house, the strong personality is very, get, gains them fame. So I look at both of those because one may balance out the other in terms of, you know, what they can achieve in life. Another thing, one of the most difficult things that I find is when I get a chart that has a very prominent, a very prominent, overly strong Saturn. So you see a chart with Saturn three degrees away from the ascendant. You see a chart with Saturn aspecting the sun or the moon very tightly or the ascendant ruler very tightly. I mean, really tightly, really harming the confidence. Or you see a first house with a fallen planet in the first house, Venus and Virgo in the first, Saturn and Aries in the first, a fallen planet. So they could have tremendous talents in the rest of the horoscope. Oh. Oh, oh my God, the artistic ability is supreme. The, the mathematical ability is supreme. I wouldn't bet 10 cents on whether they would achieve those, those talents or not if the confidence is very weak. Oh. Some, people, some people will, many will not. They'll have talents, they'll have abilities, but if Saturn has really destroyed the ascendant or the sun or the moon, oftentimes they will live out their lives and never achieve the, what the horoscope is, you know, gives us possibilities. 
So that's very difficult. Same if Saturn is tightly aspecting the ascendant degrees in that case. That's one of them. Okay. That's one of them. But but honestly, I see it more when Saturn aspects the moon. Okay. I see that or 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 a fallen planet in the first house. But if Saturn aspects the ascendant and the sun or moon, it, it, when you see it, you'll know it. When you see Saturn ruining a chart, you can see it. But you don't know if if, if the talents. Sometimes you get Saturn aspecting, making the chart very weak, and there's no talents anyway. Oh. But then other times you see charts where there's tremendous talent, but Saturn is killing everything. You don't know. As an astrologer, you don't know what they're going to do with that. But I've seen many times, because their mind is telling them, I'm not good enough, I'm not good enough, I'm not good enough, even though they have those abilities. <laughs> Okay, so even if they have, they can't use it or present it properly. Most of the times. Not always, but okay. many times. I see that too much. Okay. Yeah. Uh, then you have somebody like Donald Trump, the president. This man has the strongest horoscope I've seen in 35 years of, of astrology. This man is confident that he can do anything. Okay. He, has no, he may have no ability whatsoever. And yet he says, oh, I think I can do that, <laughs> even without any abilities. So this is another, it's another curse because he gets places, but he has no talents, has no ability. I shouldn't say none, but, but he basically has tremendous confidence. So he gets, he gets these things that he doesn't exactly deserve in terms of talents. Yeah, that's, that you are saying because he has Mars in the first or the ascendant Lord in the, the entire The entire horoscope is tremendous. Okay. He's got, he's got Rahu in the 10th house. Yes. He's got the ascendant ruler's son in the 10th house. Yes. Aspected, aspected by a full moon and Jupiter. Yes. And the full moon is aspecting Taurus. It's exaltation sign. So he's got Rahu in the 10th with the sun. Yes. Aspect by moon in Taurus and Jupiter throwing an at a stationary, stationary Jupiter. Oh. This is the strongest chart I have ever seen in 35 years. I've looked at all the presidents, not all, but I've looked at the presidents for the last hundred years. Nobody has a, a horoscope anywhere near his. Okay. It's Your just camera is again a bit high, I think. What? Your camera is again gone high, I think. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Okay. Yeah. Oh, because yep. there are many people who say that uh, Donald Trump has this sun moon in the Rahu Ketu axis, so he's just faking things. So, uh, I mean, of course, we all know that to some extent. But what's your idea? Yes. That? I don't know what's causing the faking business. I can only tell you that if you listen to his interviews from when he's thirty, he says, "I don't know. I just feel like I could do it. I just feel confident." He talked about being president when he was thirty-five, forty. For no reason. He wasn't particularly political. He just felt like, I can do that. I can do that. The confidence is unbelievably strong. Okay. And, and it's interesting because there is a quote that in, in one of the books, Fire and Fury, there's a quote. I believe it's by Roger Stone or Roger Ailes. They're, they're Republicans. And they say, I love this guy. He gets hit in the head and doesn't even know it. This guy, this guy does things and has, has, you know, criticisms, and he just walks through them. He doesn't care. <laughs> powerful. It's a powerful, powerful chart. And regarding uh, the first thing which you said, uh, that if everything is good in the chart, but if Venus and the fourth house is not good, then you will not have happiness. No happiness. Okay, and, and, Donald, and Donald Trump's Venus is the weakest planet in the chart. It's in the 12th house conjunct Saturn. Oh. And he is now, I wrote an article, it's on Facebook, on my Facebook page, where I talk about Donald Trump. I said in November, I said in November, he's in Jupiter, Jupiter, and in December 4th, he went into Jupiter, Jupiter, Venus until like May. I said from, no, from December 4th until May, you watch how bad things are going to get for him. 
and Venus is women. So the prostitutes and the porn stars, oh. it's a mess. But this is Venus. And now, right now, in it gets it started bad in December 4th. Now, late March and early April, Saturn transiting Saturn and transiting Mars are aspecting his Mercury. Oh. And this is terrible. So from from March 25th all the way until April 5th or it's very, very, very mean for it's it's terrible. It's you know, this is when bad stuff happens to him. April and May are not much better. Saturn sits in that same degree, aspecting the Mercury, all of April, all of May. So in the next three months for this guy, late March, all of April, and all of May are devastating. If he makes okay. it through this, I'll be amazed. I don't I expect for the investigations about Russia to come out in the next month, next three, four weeks. And we'll see if he makes it through it. I don't think he will, but he might. You never know. His horoscope is very strong. But um, he's coming to big problems now.